Today we learn sparse tables in order to solve the problem on the right with this quite short 40 line code. The problem that we try to solve is called RMQ, range minimum query, where we are given a sequence of numbers and we need to efficiently answer queries. Given an interval, like from this position to this one, find the minimum. Here the minimum is one, that's the smallest element. If I asked about those four elements, the minimum would be two. Obviously I can achieve this with brute force in complexity for every query, and let's say there are a few of them, I just go through the interval. In the worst case scenario, the length of interval is just the whole sequence. So brute force is Q times N. And our goal instead will be to do preprocessing in N times log of N, and then each query will be answered in constant time, not even logarithmic. It's very common that we have here times logarithm, but nope. With sparse tables, we are able to get constant time per query. This is our goal for today. First, why the sparse table? Let's first talk maybe about dense table. It's not an official term, but we can call dense table something like this. Let's pre-compute the answer for every possible range. For this interval, this interval, this interval, but then also this one, this one, and so on. There are n square intervals, and if you pre-compute all of them, obviously that's a very bad both time and space complexity. Let's call that a dense table. But then we realize that actually I don't want to keep that many ranges. I'm not interested in that many of them. So instead, let's compute only some of them. And I guess this is why this is called sparse tables. Like with binary lifting, we only do something for powers of two. For numbers one, two, four, eight, and actually here 16 doesn't matter because 16 exceeds the length of the sequence. So for those powers of two, for each of them, I want to know minimum in every interval of this size. Let's focus on length four. It means that I want to know what's the minimum here of this interval of length four. Here obviously it's two. Two is the smallest element. Then what's the minimum here? Three. Three is the smallest element. What's the minimum here? That's one then it will be here once again, here once. Uh, I mean one once again. This is an array of minima for all intervals of size 4. For length 4 we have this. And we also have the same for length 1, for length 2 and for length 8. This way we will create uh, a two-dimensional array of minima of size n by logarithm of n. That would represent everything in this two-dimensional array where this second value, the power of 2 exponent, corresponds to power 4. Again, that's very similar to binary lifting. We have two questions, two things we need to do efficiently. One, we need to compute this array efficiently. It's not enough for every such interval to just go through elements and find the minimum linearly because that would be quadratic in total. That's bad. And second thing is, we need to say how to use this array in order to answer queries very efficiently. First, let's talk about preprocessing. Uh, the blue sequence here was indices. Uh, I didn't really use it much here, but it will be more clear if we just focus on indices. So what about precomputation? If I know what's the minimum in every interval of length 4, like here maybe minimum is 7, Again, those are now indices. I don't care what exactly are the values in the array. Uh, now, if I know those things, minimum here, minimum there, minimum here, then can I efficiently say in constant time what's the minimum in this interval of length 8? Yes, that's easy. I just take minimum from here and minimum from there. And that works for any place and any power of 2. If I'm interested in interval starting here at position 3 and lasting 8, 8 positions, then I just need to combine those two. So in this particular case, we have minimum starting at 3 and corresponding to power 8, let's call it just power equal to 8, is equal to minimum of minimum starting at position 3 and corresponding to length or power equal to 4 comma, same thing starting from 7, uh, like this. 
Like this will tell me what's the minimum among positions 7, 8, 9, 10. It's obviously, I don't want to hear index with powers up to n because that would give me a quadratic array n by n. So here I will just say 3 because that's exponent. And here that's 2 and here this is 2. 3 corresponds to 2 to third power, that's 8. Like 5 would represent length 32. But more generally, starting from any position i, uh, if I want to get 2 to j power, that's the length, this is minimum of uh, something starting here with the previous power, comma, something starting somewhere with previous power. If I want to start at position 3, and I want to get minimum of 8 consecutive elements, I first take 4 consecutive elements, and then the next 4 starting at position 7. Se 7 is just 3 plus this small power of 2, so 3 plus 4. Here this is 2 at power j minus 1, and in set plus plus that's implemented like this, 1 shifted uh, bitwise by j minus 1. That's the formula I need, and I just need to put it inside two for loops, and it's best to just do it first over j, and then over i. Here we go. This way I guarantee that after I'm done with j equal to 5, only then I will move to j equal to 6. No, because j equal to 6 layer, so those with intervals of length 64, it requires j equal to 5, that previous layer, to already be computed. So when I try to compute minimum in this interval of length 8, I know that I already in the past computed minimum in length 4 here and minimum of length 4 there. This is why I first iterate over j increasingly. So you know it's something like this. j is here from 1 to a logarithm of n minus 1. And I will be, you might say that it's from 0 to n minus 1. It's not really that simple. I would say we need to do it as long as this interval fits. Okay, so the, for length 8, the last the last interval that I will compute is this one. So if this starting index here is i, then this position is i plus 8 minus 1. i plus the length, minus 1 is the last element of interval starting at i and having length 8. Uh, so I want this not to exceed n. And this is exactly what condition I need to put here. So instead of just n minus 1, it's, I think, n minus, let's see, n minus 8. Yeah, so then it's n minus 1 at power j. I mean 2 at power j. Or here, you know, when we count this, instead of thinking what exactly this is, I can do uh, a proper condition for every i from 0, with the condition being here, and this is i plus the power of 2, a minus 1 is smaller than n. Here I exactly rewrote the condition in yellow from bottom right. No, just I used proper power of 2. This is how in O of n log n we do the preprocessing. Now the remaining part is to answer queries. How do I know the minimum in this interval of length 6 if I already computed everything for intervals with lengths being powers of 2, like this one. Well, I most likely I will just break down this interval into those with length being power of 2. Like this is the combination of interval here of length 4 and this interval of length 2. But this is not always that easy. Like what if this interval has length 7? Then you need to break it down into this guy, this one, and this one. But yeah, this is always possible and you can get off log of n per query if you just grab length of the interval given and represent it in binary format to just say that here length 7 is just 4 plus 2 plus 1 and you grab proper you grab minimum from every next interval like first this one of length 4 then 2 then 1 but this is not the best we can do for problem of finding minimum in a range i want to get off one per query I use the fact that I don't really care about these intervals being disjoint. So what I will do here is I will take minimum out of this interval of length 4 
and I will take minimum out of this interval of length 4. I don't care that element on position 5 overlaps. Uh, if this is the smallest, then it will be just taken one, twice as minimum, and still, the minimum of those two intervals of length 4 will give me the proper answer. And this is the general recipe. You have interval from the query, you find the greatest possible power of 2 fitting here, let's say that this is of length 20 or 22. Then you grab 16 and starting from the very first position in the interval, you ask about minimum in 16 consecutive elements and then just in a different color. Ending exactly with the last element, you here ask also about 16, about minimum among those 16 elements. And that's it. There will always be some overlap, unless maybe this is power of 2 and you exactly break it down into two smaller powers of 2. But for any number, if you just find this previous power of 2, like for 22 you find 16, those two will nicely overlap with some small intersection, maybe a big intersection, we don't care. That's the algorithm. That's how we use sparse tables to answer queries in constant time. Again, what's about the code? Uh, we are given some kind of L and R, and then I will get length. Length of interval is R minus L plus 1, that's the formula. Then I need to find the previous power of 2. So that's like J is binary logarithm of length. And in various languages, it's there is a different way to achieve this. I not, I don't recommend using real values because then you have, can have some kind of precision errors. Try to do this with integers only. But in various ways you can achieve this. And then what we return as the answer is minimum of starting at position L, assuming that interval is from L to R, okay, starting at position L, uh, something with this power, J, so this corresponds here to the first interval, or on the for the drawing on the right, it's this interval, the first 16, this one. And then what about the other one? It must end exactly here. We need some simple math for that. If uh, this is here r, the last element, then the one over here, this is r minus 16. So this one is r minus 16 plus 1. Okay, this is r minus 16 plus 1, of course I need to replace it, not 16, 2 to jth power. And again, in C++ this is how you compute 2 to jth power. In Python you will use this. In C++ we need uh, bit shifting. And again, with this power of 2. This is how we computed the start of this second interval that we use, so that it would end perfectly and r. And now we can look at actual code. It's really the same formulas. Uh, we read the input and we mm, initialize the first kind of row of uh, our table. For zero, that, that means intervals with length equal to one. So then just for every interval with length equal to one, we know the minimum, it's just this element. And then for every next layer, so for the every next power, every next exponent k, we use the formula that I wrote down in drawings. This is preprocessing in O of n times log of n. Log here I just hard coded at the top for simplicity, but you can also like get it after reading n. You could here say log is and just get in some way log of n. Then answer queries. Uh, for every query we read l and r and we run the function. What does the function do? Uh, here we need some way to find the logarithm of, of the length, right? I get the length, then this is some way to get the logarithm, and then I use formula from the drawing. We already understand that. How did I uh, get the logarithm here? I just started from zero and raised exponent. You know, like, let's say that length is 20. Then what I did is I looked at consecutive powers of 2, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and I move to the next power as long as I don't exceed 20. Here I would stop at 16 and I would know the exponent. That's what this code does. But it's logarithmic. 
if I one by one raise the exponent. So now this is log of n, not that cool. Uh, instead, I want to do it in of one. Two ways for that. One is to do some mm, bit operations. And in C++, you can use function count leading zeros for that. This is a built-in function. So if it's an int, it has 32 bits, but you need to use 31 here and subtract this number of leading zeros. You can watch my lecture, past lecture about uh, bitwise operations. Uh, this is, I would say, an ugly trick. But you can also just pre-compute all that stuff. Again, I don't recommend real values. You can use that, but from time to time you will get a precision error. Uh, what if I pre-compute it? I have some array of size max n. And I need this. I need to know this in advance. So after reading n, after uh, while reading the input, I will say for one, the proper power is just zero of power. And then for everything else, I need to you know simulate this in some way. And I can do it with for loops, maybe nested for loops. Uh, like every next interval of size power of two initialized with every next value but I believe the simplest way also kind of tricky is this log of i is log of i over two plus one uh, easiest way to think about it logarithm binary logarithm is how many times you need to divide by two in order to get down to one right? For seven, you need to divide by two, you get three, divide by two, you get one, done. Uh, so just divide by two once and take that logarithm. And now we have the extra linear preprocessing, so it doesn't matter because this one is anyway slower. And we can efficiently say what's the logarithm uh, thanks to this preprocessing. That being said, in C++, just use the count leading zero formula. Let's compile this. And uh, what are the errors? I think that this is a forbidden name. Again, <laughs> okay, bin lock, binary logarithm. And I'm ready to submit. If you anyway have a account, an account on CSES, then just you know submit here instead. It's basically the same problem, just indexing is from one to n. And just waiting for that green accepted verdict. Uh, to confirm that everything is okay. Sparse tables are the best for, for example, minimum or maximum query problem because we don't care that the interval overlaps. It's not green, but it's accepted. Cool. Uh, so you can use it for minimum, maximum, and GCD. If you compute GCD, greatest common divisor of intervals, you also don't care about overlapping. But nope, for sum. You can't compute sum of numbers and get this of this intersection because the middle you will count you will double count basically the intersected count uh, the intersected part so use sparse tables for minimum maximum gcd of an interval but also only if the sequence doesn't change if there are no updates about the sequence if there are updates then you need a more complicated data structure and that's a segment tree we will learn more about it in some future video Code and links are in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.